in the last lecture which was part 1 of multiple operations on discrete time signals we solved two examples and in part 2 we will solve two more examples in the third example we have a signal x 3n and it is equal to 71263 and we need to find a new signal y 3n which is equal to x3 minus n minus 1 so it is clear that we have performed multiple operations on signal x 3n to get signal y 3n and when you look closely you will find there are two types of operations performed the first one is time reversal operation because we have minus n and the second one is the time shifting operation because we have minus 1 so let's try to find out signal y 3n let's move to the solution and we will get signal y 3n after performing multiple operations on signal x 3n so I will first write signal x 3n which is equal to 7 1 2 6 and 3 2 is the value of signal when n is equal to 0 now there are two options either you can perform the time reversal first and then time shifting or you can perform time shifting first and then time reversal in the first case we will perform time shifting first this means we have signal x 3n and after performing the time shifting operation we are getting a new signal x3 n minus 1 now here we have n minus 1 this means there will be right shifting by one integer place and we know when there is right shifting the whole signal will move towards the right and when this happens this arrow will move towards the left and here the movement will be of one integer place so signal x3 n minus 1 will be equal to 7 1 2 6 and 3 but this time the arrow which we have here will now go to this position so instead of having the arrow below 2 like here we have arrow below 1 this means 1 is the value of this signal when n is equal to 0 and it is clear that this will be the case when the signal will shift towards the right now I will give you one very important point before moving any further there is no priority order there is no priority order for the operations you can perform any operation but the only thing you need to focus on the variable we are having here signal x 3n means n is the independent variable so whenever you perform any operation then the operation should be with respect to n like here in this case we have performed the shifting operation with respect to n similarly whenever you have any operation then first focus on n if it is not isolated isolate it first and then perform the operation you will never make any mistake in multiple operations so keeping this point in our mind now we will move further we have signal x3 and minus 1 we have a new discrete time signal x3 n minus 1 now focus on the variable n n is isolated isolated means it is not multiplied by anything like in this case n is multiplied to minus 1 and in this case n is multiplied to 2 but here n is not multiplied to anything it is isolated so we are free to perform the time reversal operation there is no need to isolate n so we will move further and without any problem we will perform the time reversal operation and we will have signal x3 minus n after performing the time reversal n will become minus n so finally we have signal x3 minus n minus 1 and we know what we are required to do in case of time reversal the whole signal will flip about this arrow so we will have 3 then we have 6 then we have 2 1 
which will be the value at n equal to 0 and finally we have 7. So this is our answer. This is signal y3n. Now in case number 2, we will perform time reversal first and then we will perform the time shifting. And case number 2 is little bit confusing to the students because in this case you will not find n isolated like this. So let's quickly perform the time reversal first. We have the signal x3n and we will perform the time reversal to get a new signal x3 minus n. And we know x3 minus n will be equal to 3, 6, 2. Then we have 1 and finally we have 7. So this is what we have. Now we will take our signal x3 minus n and we will perform the time shifting operation. Most of the students will directly write down minus n minus 1 and they will get the answer equal to 3, 6, 2, 1, 7 with this arrow shifting to this new position and this is the wrong answer. This is wrong because you have performed the operation with respect to minus n. You have performed the time shifting operation with respect to minus n but minus n is not the variable. n is the variable. So it is important to separate n and therefore we will first write down signal like this. Now when you open this bracket you will have x3 minus n minus 1 but the operation is now different. Instead of right shifting by one integer place we have left shifting by one integer place. So this will give us signal 3, 6, 2, 1, 7 and as we have left shifting the arrow will move to the right. So the arrow will move below 1 and when you compare this with this you will find they are same. So we have the same answer when you follow a simple rule which says perform the operation with respect to the variable. And we have done this in case of continuous time signals as well. It is nothing new. There we performed all the operations with respect to the independent variable t not with respect to minus t or with respect to 2t etc. And therefore there is no need to learn any priority order. If you keep this thing in your mind you can solve the questions easily. So this is all for example number 3 and now we will move on to the example number 4. In the example number 4 we have x4n equal to 1 2 3 4 5. 3 is the value of signal when n is equal to 0. Therefore we have this arrow and we need to find y4n which is equal to x4 2n minus 1. So here we have two operations and the first operation is the time scaling operation which is of the type time compression because here 2 is multiplied to n this means a is equal to 2 and this implies mod a is greater than 1 which implies there should be time compression. So the first operation is time compression and the second operation is time shifting which is of the type right shifting. So I think you can solve this question easily. Therefore I will give you this problem as the homework problem. So solve it and once you have your answer post it in comment section. I will end this lecture here. See you in the next one.